Who's afraid of the big bad churn monster? In any classic tale, there's always a main plot, and it takes us through an introduction and then an ending. It's what happens in between those points that makes the tale really, really interesting. The same can be said for a customer journey. In the beginning, we've got a new customer, we've signed the deal, and in the end, we're hoping to keep them. But it's what happens in the middle that makes that story really interesting, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So what we're gonna dig in today is how demand gen tactics that are usually used for new business, which are already in your marketing tool shed, can be used for customer experience, product marketing, product adoption, customer marketing, and ways to help you beat the churn monster at the end of your drama. So why does this matter? There's lots of reasons, but let's boil it down to some stats. The cost of bringing on a new customer is 5x the cost of retaining a customer. So think about all the resources that you put into acquiring new business, and now if you don't put that same effort into retaining those customers, you've just squashed the efforts of all of your sales reps, your demand gen marketing peeps, all of, the, all of that. So next stat is that if you increase user retention by 2%, that means that you can actually cut your costs by 10% at the end of the day. That's a pretty big deal for your ROI. And then lastly, if you reduce churn by 5%, you can actually see an increase in profits from 25 to 125%. That's some bling bling right there for your business. All right, so we mentioned those demand gen tactics that you're putting in your tool shed. So now how do we kind of apply them across the different funnels so that your customer marketing, your product marketing, your product adoption, and your customer experience efforts really land with your new customers? So here we've kind of developed two different funnels. People on the demand gen side, you're probably gonna be familiar with this funnel, right? You start out with tons of leads, tons of MQLs, and you're eventually moving them down to your high quality leads and eventually your customers. Now here on the customer side, you have your customers at the top who you know are gonna really get your product, they're gonna jump in and they're gonna totally get it. Now your job on this customer side of the funnel is to make sure that you've expanded the amount of customers who love your product and get it so that they've won their own battles. So some of the tactics that go into this, the ones that are in your marketing tool shed, the first one that you'll hear about all the time is content, right? We've all heard content is king. So on the customer side, content can be really important. You wanna make sure that you have a lot of it, that you have it fresh and you have it frequently out there. Examples of what you can give to your customers to help them really understand how to use your product are videos, tutorials, playbooks, online whiteboard series, um, AI bots that can actually be there in real time to help them move through with tutorials. So these are really all important pieces to help your customers know how, why, and when to use the product. The second piece, Segmenting and targeting. We all know in new business how important this is. You wanna go after the leads that are the best fit so you can put your efforts behind them. Now on the customer side, what you need to understand is that not all of your customers are gonna need the same things. You're gonna have different types of businesses. Some are gonna be small businesses with different needs, enterprise size clients. You're gonna have some with different packages of the type of product that they bought from you. They're all gonna have different needs. In addition to the type of business that they are, they're all gonna be at different stages of adoption and onboarding, and so that's really important. So what you need to do is understand who your different customers are, which group they fall into, and what type of content they need at each journey of their product adoption. The next piece, we always hear this on the new business side, is that we have to test and we have to measure. We need to understand what our conversion rate optimization is. We need to understand how engaged our people are. Same thing applies to the customer side. We need to understand which messages are hitting the mark with our customers that are getting them to go into the product, getting them to adopt it, and which leads to the most success for them. Lastly, influencers. 
right? On the demand gen side and on the new business side, you'll often see these in case studies, people on social media, testimonials, all sorts of things saying how great your product is. Well, on the customer and the product side, you can actually use the same ideas on the customer side to help influence those who might be a little skeptical about how your product works to get them to move forward. Things like customers who see 10x ROI and our product do these three things at Y quantity. So you can use that in an email message to say, hey, you guys should be doing this. If you're not, you're not gonna get the ROI that we promised you, but if you are, you might have some really, really great success. One of the themes that kind of goes within all of these that is always present on the new business side is to actually use your peers within your company that you work for. Get your business intelligence people involved. Get your product people involved. Heck, get the sales people involved that sold the deal to let you know why the customers signed in the first place. What's that pain point? So it's really, it's a village effort. So keep the village together. Don't silo yourself on the customer side just because you're on the customer side. So to recap, one of the things to keep in mind is that the tactics that you're using on the demand gen side to get the best funnel of the best customers possible, you can also use on the customer side to expand the amount of customers who are super excited and happy with your product. So in the end, you've beaten the churn monster at the very end of this particular drama. Don't forget these stats. These are really important. This is how you let your executives know why it's important to invest in product marketing, customer marketing, and customer experience. Um, when we think about these four points, again, content is king no matter what side of the business that you sit on. Segmenting and targeting is not just for new business. Apply it to your customers as well. Testing and measuring, align your roadmap, get your business intelligence people aligned with your internal company analytics. Know what's going on with your logo goals from retention, from money to um, number of like how many customers that you have. And lastly, don't be afraid to share the stories of your successes and the people that also failed because there's always learnings in it. So as I leave you today, we really want to hear what your experience has been on the customer side of the house. Have you had other wins? Have you had other tactics that you've shared from the demand, set, demand gen side over to your customer side? Please share it in the comments. Give us a like, give us a comment, give us a share. We hope that this really like resonates with you guys and that in your dramas, you're beating the churn monster every day.